This year, the 8th of May 2020, marks the 75th anniversary of VE Day, or Victory in Europe Day, and marks the unconditional surrender of the German forces at the end of the Second World War. Since 2016, we have been running a number of oral history projects that seek to capture the memories of those who lived through the Second World War in Northern Ireland. These have included the Belfast Blitz Project 75, 2015 to 2016, US 75, 2017 to 2018, and the ongoing The War and Knee Project. We have chosen a selection of these interviews to highlight how VE Day was celebrated in Northern Ireland 75 years ago. I was up in Derry at that stage, and Brook Park was um, the venue for celebration. And uh, the children were all um, invited to dress up for fancy dress. So I was organised by my parents, my mother, I suppose, uh, to ride my tricycle. It must have still been around, because there's a photograph of this somewhere. And I was dressed um, with lots of Vs all over me. I remember having a hat and uh, my mother had sewn buttons on the hat to represent the Morse code of V and uh, also um, I had V's stuck on the bicycle so when the wheels went around the V went around as well <laughs> and that kind of thing lots of I suppose I was dressed in something relatively ordinary and comfortable but V's stuck all over me. I'm not sure if I got a prize or not. It wasn't the first one, but <laughs> might have. Can't remember. Yes. No. It was nice. Obviously, a lot of kids and a lot of uh, my mother's friends' children would have been involved as well. I remember very, very clearly uh, uh, VE Day. Very, very clearly. By then, I was fifteen, and of course, every the. Uh, peace had been declared and everybody was in great form and by then I had quite a few pals and we all went into the city hall and there was dancing and my goodness and the uh, people in uniform, a lot of people, a lot of sailors in, there must have been a few boats in but there were a lot of sailors all around the city hall and they were grabbing girls and kissing them and we were making rings and we were dancing and uh, of course I was enjoying all this you see and uh, <laughs> my uncle <laughs> the one who had been on the army and then had come to live with us he was an inspector on the buses and he had seen all the carry on of me kissing the sailors and what <laughs> so he blackmailed me <laughs> he said when it's my turn to do the dishes you do them or else i'm telling <laughs> oh that was terrible but I remember that oh everybody was so joyous you know it was it was wonderful sad of course for people whose relatives didn't come home a funny thing I remember that the world uh, the end of the great uh, uh, great war mm -hmm. that was on the uh, after four years and uh, of course I had only been about four year old then but I remember my father was walking out in one of the fields and uh, the next thing I seen my mother coming down waving a towel or something over her head, shouting the war's over. The only celebration we had was with the Lambeck drums. <laughs> and I, I walked a bit at the Lambeck drums in them days and I got involved in the drumming match <laughs> in the square in Lisbon. Nine o'clock to eleven. <laughs> well, I, I think I won it because I was drumming again. A fella, uh, 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 we're all good drummers, the Curie family. But I stayed, I stayed on the job. I, I drummed the whole two hours, but the, the all boys were changing, uh, you know, maybe doing uh, 10 or 20 minutes and somebody else put it on. But, a big one, one of my supporters, he was standing talking to me, you know. I, I go to Santa, stay where you are. <laughs> you, you're counting, you know. So, so he said, he says, that's the night to go down the street in the yard, down back drums. <laughs> but it was a good night for me, I didn't mind. Enjoyed it. Yeah.
Then if I remember the day it stopped very clearly because there was a chap rode into the village shouting, the war's over, the war's over. The minister son actually, he was the son of the, 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 the resident Church of Ireland minister, a chap called John Bateman, and he, and, uh, he rode into the village shouting, the war's over, the war's over. And of course everybody was there. Well we all knew it was coming to an end yeah. because we had all been busy building the big bonfire you know, in the village for the, the celebrations. Oh, well, there's a bonfire and dancing and singing, and, and uh, I can remember that night, uh, we weren't going to have the celebrations the next day, but that night, uh, I was in the accordion band at that time then, and we got the, we got the, we got the band out, and I can remember braiding out through the countryside at three o'clock in the morning, playing music because the war was over, you know. <laughs> Why we did it, I don't know, but you know, we were just, I'm just so glad <laughs> yeah. you know, it was all over and done with, you yeah. know. But then we had the bonfire the following day, and uh, oh, yeah, it was a great celebration. Uh, the rejections up the town. There was what? The rejections up the town, the, everybody was out on the town. Which town? In the middle of Port Down. Port of Down? We were all out in the middle of the town. The, Music and all was going, and we belonged to an, an organisation at that ta time called the YCW, Young Christian Workers. We belonged to them, and there was a choir squad of us suspended. we have been in the uh, kissing rings. <laughs> so, so everybody was out celebrating. Oh, and uh, you were kissing a few girls, and you were uh, suspended. Uh, doing a bit of a jig and then kissing. <laughs> I was in Belfast, again, living with my sister, and the war ended. And I said, oh, let's go out, and she said, no. <laughs> she said, we'll, we'll go out. Her husband was on the Navy as well. She said, no, Tony and Danny are still away. We'll celebrate when they get home. So they didn't get home till after the Japanese war had finished. Three day was May, wasn't it? When the Japanese war ended in August, and it was about six months after that when they finally got home. This big episode for Vida. No, well, there was a friend, a uh, family. She, she, this one was a good bit older than me. She was doing medicine. She lived in Dublin, and there was a family. She used to come to Belfast now, go to Dublin, and there was the Floral Hall. You've heard of it, and. I didn't go to dances, and I didn't do but anyway, uh, we decided we would go to the Floral Hall. And you took the tram up the Antrim Road, and then at a certain spot you got out, and there was a wee bus that took you up to the Floral Hall. And she had bought a scarf, and there were a lot of um, a French things written on it, you know. I can't remember now what to wear, but they were, but we were sitting in the bus anyway. She had the scarf in her head, and behind us these two were soldiers, and they were Belgian soldiers, and they saw this this French, and they started to talk and try to, I can't remember anyway. Then we went into the. Were you two able to understand them? Were they speaking in English or? Well, the, the, one of them was very good English. He was. My French was not very good. Anyway, when we went in, then one of them came over and asked me to dance, and the other one danced with Mary. And he was a great dancer, and he could dance me around. And anyway, his name was Marcel. We used to go to dances, or we'd go for walks. Uh, and then... Um, Yes, VE Day came along, and we weren't. We, I was. I don't know. I went downtown, and who did I meet but Marcel? And uh, I don't know. I was with somebody who was going somewhere, and I agreed to meet him later on. And what was I going to say to my poor mother? And I knew there was going to be a dance in Queens that night, and there were two. Call them fellas, boys, men, whatever they were, 
and I, I don't know where I came across them, but anyway, I suggested to them that they would go to the dance. And neither of them were dancers, that was the point. Anyway, I arranged to meet them at 10 o'clock or something, somewhere, can't remember. And then I met Marcel at 8 o'clock. <laughs> and we went to the Ulster Hall. And there was a dance on, there were dancers on everywhere. Anyway, came the time that I had to go, I said I had to go. And he was very disappointed, but anyway, I said, I'm sorry, but I have to go. And then I met Peter and John, and we got up to the student union, was at the back, it was where the um, music place is now. And it was packed, and the doors were closed, but somebody had put a chair outside a window. So we all climbed in. <laughs> I've never done anything like that in my life before, and I've never done anything like that since. <laughs> so we went in and we danced, and then they walked home, and uh, they we all lived sort of near each other, and we said night, night, and that was that. And then, not very long, I don't know whether I saw Marcel after that, but I got a letter from him saying he was going, he was, uh, he was leaving Ireland, bye bye. If you or a loved one has memories of World War II in Northern Ireland, we want to hear from you. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, we have instigated remote interviews over Skype and FaceTime, and more people have been submitting their written memories. If this interests you, get in touch with us on 75 4847 or email us at projects at niwarmemorial.org. Finally, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. And indeed, look out for more stories from our oral history collection by following us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.